Hello guys, welcome back. So Lucky's giving me little pokes. We sat down at 10 in the morning to try to record for you guys. We really did. And then my life went fucking crazy like it has been lately. I think Mercury's in retrograde and, you know, joy. So we finally got a chance to sit down and, you know, I knew the topic today should be about Loki and alters, but Loki's like, do a more general thing, more general. And I think I know what he means. As we're going through this process of getting the house all neat and super tidy, um, obviously we're coming across stuff for gods that I haven't seen in weeks, months, maybe a year or so. And we are having to make a decision uh, as a family. Do we keep it? Some stuff we've kept and other gods have claimed. And that god still hasn't come back, so fine. And some stuff, you, I put out mental notes yesterday like, hey, your stuff, this stuff I made you, or this stuff, this pile of stuff you have, I'm tired of seeing it. I don't want to clean it for the rest of eternity. It's going. And I think we got pingbacks of like, well, I really don't care as long as that one thing's there. And, you know, at first I was like, that's okay. But then the more I thought of it, I'm like, I don't even know if you're going to have this one thing when you come back. Because this is my house. I have to do the cleaning. I've never seen a god come down and clean their own altar. I go, hey, we got bare stuff to do, you know? But, you know, I've never seen them do that. So, you know, they were excited and they were all, like, kind of running around the house. And Asmodeus jumped in the middle he cut, in a good way because he says, you know these nasty sage bundles you have? And I'm like, yeah, because I really use them. And then, like, it's a black pile of ashes and there's little bits of random sage in it. And yeah, it, it starts to look bad. He said, as a gift to the gods, you know, get rid of these little burnt nubbins and you have sage because we cleaned out my drawers. He's like, you have these beautiful sage sticks. Set those out. And so we did. And, you know, the, the altars look great. Some stuff for some gods went and they really didn't seem like they cared. And I said, you know, some stuff, you know, Hermes had had some stuff. I told Loki, I said, it's officially your stuff. I said, because he only comes in and out of his house when he feels like it. I said, that's not really a relationship. He shows up to schmooze stuff and maybe fuck stuff up until he gets attention. But I said, no. I said, you you can have his stuff. I said, he's... Yeah, I think he's more Loki's friend. He is more Loki's friend. And kind of like, I think I noticed him walking around one day and he was like, oh, fuck. Hi. Hi. I'm here for you. Because he lies. And you know, I think that's really it. I said, your little buddy can have X, Y, and Z. But other than that, you know, you're keeping his stuff. And he's like, that's fair. Because we got Hermes stuff right up there on top of the fridge. I said, you know... We just, we really don't get along. We really don't get along. I think he was interested in me because I'm a friend of Loki's, but Loki's like, yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. Friend of Loki's, huh? So, <laughs> so, so, you know, um, he, he lost a couple of things, not much. And we, we redid the, um, all the altars and Loki is actually a highly generous god which I should point out because his whole altar he has space there for Ignari and he has space there for Asmodeus he usually usually does not mind as long as he has at least one altar that that is his and that is his and he can think about letting other people or, or at least one tiny space if you don't have enough room for an altar at least give him one tiny space that's totally, totally his. And then if you want to have other places and you're like, oh, no, so-and-so's in my life, would you please share a little bit of space? He usually won't mind. Just ask for permission first. Be polite. It would be just like, well, say like you have your family and then you decide, oh, I'm going to add this really cool person I met on Facebook to my family. Please don't. And you had them move in and you told, you know, half your family, you have to get rid of all this and you have to get, you, that would work just as well. So, you know, have negotiations with them. And, you know, some of them are very spirited and some of them are very contrary. And, you know, Inari's fox ears were, you know, flat back on their head. They're not a fox, but you know what I mean? And, you know, we were cleaning their altar like at three in the morning because insomnia. And, you know, they, they liked some stuff. They didn't like other stuff. And they were touched that I was doing it. But at the same time, they're pissed off. Inari's kind of, you know, can be very kind and sweet. But it can also be hot temper too. And it was like, why the fuck are you bothering me? Why are you bothering clean this altar 
dust on it. They know I have disabilities, but they're still, they're kind of high test, which is why we don't always work together. And Lucky's more, you know, he can be really spicy and snappy and fiery, but he makes it worth it. He makes it worth it. So we cleaned his altar upstairs first, and we cleaned up his little book area, and we were doing that spark joy thing. And, you know, after we're done, you know, all the other gods are like, I too would like... I too would like to spark joy and you know I think we sometimes get in the way as humans because you know Kamari method she says don't let your family see you doing this um because you know you like your mom or your dad or your kids or somebody's just gonna run in and grab this stuff and just take it to another part of the house it's, <laughs> I don't know how it works with more than one person in the house but you're not supposed to let them see you doing this stuff um, in talking about your items, not their items, everybody's supposed to sort their own stuff, but you know, you'll be sorting your stuff and somebody in the family will walk, walk over, you don't like it, I got that for you now, right? Well, it's the same thing with the gods. Sometimes they want to get rid of something and maybe you spent a lot of time making it. And maybe you spent money sending away to, say, Mexico or some other place or Australia or wherever you sent away to, to for it. And they don't like it anymore. They don't like it anymore. Maybe they never liked it and they were just like, oh, you're so talented. And they just never liked it. Now they're they're all lining up. So I think I'm going to, over the next couple of weeks, have gods going like this at me and going, I don't like that. I don't like that. And, you know, it's, it's a communication thing, too. Um, if you're working with them a lot, they usually have more of a chance to say, hey, you know that thing on my altar? I really can't stand it. Um, and stuff will just pop into your head. Maybe you don't, you know, you don't talk to your gods or, you know, you don't have a communication line open. Stuff will start popping into your head like, oh, that that altar for so-and-so, that, that thing on the altar, I should, I should really get rid of that. And you'll start getting this strong sense. Ask for a sign. Ask for a sign you can't mix. Say, are you telling me you don't want this thing on your altar? And then get rid of it. But the, you know, the main part of having an altar, this is why I say you really shouldn't have them. If you, if you don't use it, an altar is the most wasted space in your home because you could have done anything with that space and you made an altar out of it. Altars are a place for you to go and commune with your gods. If you are not using it, if you just want it for aesthetic reasons, fine, but if you are not using it, it is wasted space. You can make the most expensive altar in the world, but if you never use it and there's just dust and colonies of spiders and everything else on it, you're wasting that space. And it's not get the altar. I think the thing we misteach, you know, young pagans or witchlets or whatever is make the altar god give you stuff that's not really how it works the altar is like kind of your power base to go recharge to give you an area a sacred area to go talk to them in you really don't need one and for some people it actually doesn't work because they they get really uncomfortable so you know easiest thing is if you don't like them don't have them but if you're going to have one and they know i have mobility and health issues and that if it's too much to keep up, you know, have a talk about it. If, you know, my gods understand it, stuff does start to get dusty. It's not out of lack of love. It's out of lack of health. But, you know, if you have an altar and you notice, like, you're you're never going to the effort to clean it, you know, even, like, with my health issues and you're just looking at it and it's not just that it's, like, dusty or something. You're just like, ugh. I have a heart to heart with that God and go, look, there was a time when we were getting along like a house on fire and you got this huge ass altar. And now, now we just don't have that relationship. We really do not. Now we have a shoebox relationship. That's about the size of space I think you need. We don't have a grand altar relationship and that's okay. You know, and if they're at all honest, they'll go like, yeah, we're, we, we jump the shark. I do that with all my gods. I have a super intense period where we can't get enough of each other. And we all, I think, do. And then you're you're kind of calm in, you know, the big grand altar is, like, really nice. And then, and then after a while, like, you could have one item on one shelf, honestly, for how much you see each other. But you still got that big old altar sitting there. It's okay. Talk to them. Repurpose stuff. Donate it. Sell it. Um, give it away. Bin it, whatever causes the least amount of stress. 
And, you know, just tell them, tell them, you know, I, I, at the time it really meant something, but it doesn't mean anything anymore. And same thing for them. They might come to you and, like I said earlier, say, that thing you got me, that was great, but that was X amount of years ago. I, I, I've moved on. I love you, but I've moved on. And, you know, what, as you do this more and more and more, whether you just get a sense of they want it or you, you hear them in inner ear or whatever, or La Santa used to be really fiery and throw stuff off her altar, so it was easy to know. Um, you you will get better at it, and you know they will get more trust in you because they will be like, oh, I can get things from you, and then when I'm done with them, you will take them away, like the good little servant of the gods that you are. <laughs> and you know, um, and also if I want to keep something, even if it's falling apart, you're okay with it. I told I told all of them as we're doing this, I said, I don't care if it's falling apart and everything else. I usually don't. I said, but but if you don't like it, just tell me it's going. You're not going to make me mad. It's not going to like cost you a replacement. Other than that little Furby. <laughs> Other than that little Furby, you know. Um, I said, you know, really, you know, if you really don't want to, it, it, it will go. It will go. It doesn't have to be there. But, you know, you know, they will compromise with you sometimes, too. If it's something you're really super attached to, sometimes they'll be like, okay, I don't like this thing, but you like it. You do have to compromise. They can't have their way 100% of the time. You can't have your way 100% of the time. So this Furby rocker that's over here on Loki's altar is more like my Furby rocker now. And I'm like, no, she's cute. And you used to love her and you played with her all the time. And, you know, now you don't want her? I said, no, you're keeping her. I sent all the way to, for, to Australia for her. I love her. You're not getting rid of her. But, you know, the other stuff he had, he had like, stuff that we call it his prey when electronics break down sometimes he puts a paw out and takes them some of it he kept some of it i said please just help me know my discernment did i i really keep this because you wanted it or did i keep it for sentimental reasons or what happened and sometimes it's like you know he's pretty easy going especially with loki and you know just keep the lines of communication open and you know if you have a god coming around then you know say you've cleaned everything up and you haven't seen this god in years or you don't have a good relationship with this god and you got rid of all this stuff to remind you of them they don't need an altar to have a relationship with you they do not they do not in fact you know sometimes it's better off if some don't have altars it's not that you you love them less but they just don't have that kind of relationship where yeah, I need a place to light a candle for you. Yeah, I need a place to light incense for you. And again, guys, that's all, you know, in the old days, I'm old school. That was all considered training well. You should work on the relationship to the point where you get to the point where, you know, if you're lighting incense, it's because, hey, I know you enjoy incense. Would you like a stick? Oh, yes, please. Or, hey, I know you like candles. Would you like a candle? Oh, yes, please. Get a good enough relationship that you don't think you have to go out and buy 10 pounds of incense to beg the gods for things or 20 candles and beg the gods for things. Work on getting a good enough relationship that, you know, you're willing to compromise and do all bunches of stuff instead of, you know, just buying stuff for the altar. Like, part of my service to Loki is cleaning the house or cooking, and that's a valid service. And maybe you do something else for Loki, or you do something else for your god. You can do a lot of things that don't involve going out and setting up an altar or going out and buying one more piece for the altar. They're, they're fine, just to recap, they're fine to have if you love them, if the god indicates that they want one, and it's helping your relationship. They're no good if they're just taking up space and they're collecting dust. I don't care how much you spent on it. An altar is not a, you know, kind of magical contract with the gods. It's not like I gave you an altar, therefore nothing bad is ever going to happen in your life. A little rain in every life must fall and we all must eat our peck of dirt and all those other great old sayings, you know. Um, you, everybody's going to have misfortune in their life and everybody's going to have good times, but, you know, the altar should be functional it should be something you both enjoy and it should be something you use if you've reached a point where you don't have a relationship anymore it's probably a good sign to disassemble the altar and you know do whatever you want with the parts or to um 
to do whatever you feel is right in that thing. But usually I dissemble stuff. When I notice a god hasn't been around for a couple weeks or a month or so, I'm like, okay, they, they really don't need this tiny little space. I gave them a tiny little space, but they truly don't need it because they're never here. So Hermes, like, officially has nothing. He does have w one little tiny thing up there, but I think it's because he's Loki's friend. I don't know if I said this recording. I'm really tired because it's up to 4 a.m. And I got up super early. Um, You know, I think he was just walking around one day and I noticed him and he was like, oh, fuck. Um, uh, and then he was like, yeah, I want to be your friend. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know, cause he lies a lot. And I, I really think he's Loki's friend more than my friend. Cause we just, we don't jibe. And, you know, I found a lot of gods through them wanting relationships and you find out you don't jibe. You don't need to keep their stuff. You don't need to keep your exes and stuff. <laughs> get rid of it. It's okay. Go through and, you know, get rid of it. If you really like it, if it's a beautiful statue or candle or something, fine. Keep it. But keep it for you. Don't You don't have to keep it for the ex. So, you know, it got, look, he's like, yeah, ex got, ha, I won, ha, ha. <laughs> He's so mature. So if you guys like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.